February 14, 1979, a C-141A scheduled to be the first C-141B production aircraft arrived at Lockheed, Georgia. Major configuration changes included a 23 and one third foot fuselage stretch and installation of aerial refueling capability. After receipt, inspections, and washing and stripping of paint from the areas where the fuselage would be parted, the first stretch production aircraft was moved immediately into the vast production area of Air Force Plant No. 6. Parting of the first production model took place April 23, 1979. The operation is a series of carefully calculated moves. First, the nose section is separated and then pulled forward from the stationary center fuselage section to open the area for the 160-inch forward plug. When the nose section is free, the aft fuselage section is separated and pulled back to open the area for the 120-inch aft plug. The commander of Warner Robins Air Logistics Command and other Air Force dignitaries witnessed the first production parting. In order to install the two prefabricated plugs, the three aircraft sections rigged in a fixture as one unit are moved to the next forward position. To facilitate positioning of the prefabricated barrel section plugs forward and aft of the wings, a specially designed crane-held jig fixture is used. When complete, the added fuselage sections contain all of the same equipment that is in the present C-141A configuration. The center fuselage is also reinforced due to the higher bending loads created by the additional length. After installation of both plugs and the aerial refueling receptacle structure on the upper fuselage just aft of the flight deck, the aircraft is moved onto an air pad system. This air pad technique permits sideways movement across the production floor to the final portion of the production line. The functional systems that have been removed from the stretch work can then be reinstalled and checked out for proper operation. The smooth movement of the aircraft across the production floor is due entirely to a cushion of air, and amazingly enough, the air pressure required to float the 70-ton Starlifter is only about 25 psi. This technique reduces manhandling to a minimum and contributes a significant savings in production time. The second production unit to be modified after the prototype became a static loads test article. This aircraft received proof load tests which simulated flight conditions up to 100% of those expected in operation. While production continued to move on schedule at Lockheed, Georgia, Flight tests of the prototype continued at Edwards Air Force Base. The aerial refueling capability of the C-141B was demonstrated by well over 300 contacts with the KC-135 tanker during testing of the B prototype airplane. The aerial refueling system on the stretched Starlifter provides a means of refueling any or all of the 10-wing fuel tanks of the C-141B from a tanker. The maximum fuel flow rate into the aerial refueling receptacle is 6,000 pounds per minute at a delivery pressure of 55 pounds per square inch. Aerial refueling of the C-141B reduces dependence on overseas airfields, permits longer distance non-stop flights, and shortens closure times for both resupply and deployment operations. Extensive nighttime refueling exercises were included in the flight test program at Edwards Air Force Base. Like the A model, the C-141B proved to be an excellent platform for the paradrop of both men and materials. Paradrop tests, including live static line jumps, were successfully accomplished time and again. The C-141B, like the A, permits jumpers to exit simultaneously from both sides of the aircraft thus allowing large numbers of troops to be delivered to pinpointed areas for combat or humanitarian aid. Airdrop tests of palletized loads were also accomplished with no problems. Meanwhile, at Lockheed, Georgia, the production line reached its peak rate, 10 aircraft per month being received and delivered. During peak production, approximately 32 aircraft are in various stages of modification. The last of the 270 B model Starlifters is scheduled to be delivered by the third quarter of 1982.
The third production aircraft to be modified was the first article delivered to the Military Airlift Command. It rolled out September 17, 1979, and was readied for flyaway. First flight of this aircraft occurred on November 5, 1979. As expected, all systems checked out and airplane performance was excellent. The flying qualities of the C-141B are generally improved over those of the C-141A. Pitch trim, elevator, and rudder are more effective and will appear to be more sensitive due to the longer tail length. Longitudinal and directional stability are also improved, as is the natural dampening of oscillations in these axes. The flight lasted four hours and 36 minutes, with the aircraft landing at dusk. On December 4, 1979, the Air Force took delivery of their first production C-141B Starlifter. The occasion brought numerous dignitaries, including Secretary of the Air Force Hans Mark, General Heiser, Commander-in-Chief of the Military Airlift Command, and Lieutenant General Merkling, Vice Commander of the Air Force Logistics Command. Ahead of schedule and below cost, the C-141 stretch modification program is hailed as a significant event for the Military Airlift Command truly an airlift enhancement program that will enable the nation to better fulfill its national objectives. After presentation of the ceremonial key, the aircraft was turned over to MAC Commander-in-Chief General Heiser. With the General at the controls, the aircraft lifted off Dobbins Air Force Base en route to Charleston Air Force Base, where it spent a few days prior to departing for Altus Air Force Base, Oklahoma, where operational crews received flight training. The excellent C-141B program is evidenced at the Altus Training Center by C-141A as well as other aircraft crew members, making a relatively easy transition to the new C-141B Starlifter configuration. Of the various B model changes, the flight deck simulator, navigational instrumentation, and in-flight refueling techniques receive major emphasis. Meanwhile, since the delivery of the first production C-141B to Charleston Air Force Base, Lockheed is now delivering additional stretched versions of the big Starlifter at the rate of 10 per month, and the Air Force is putting them back to work as soon as they're received. In the fall of 1980, as part of Operation Reforger, two C-141Bs flew non-stop from the U.S. to Germany, accomplished their airdrop mission, refueled in flight, and returned home without touching foreign soil. Other non-stop operational flights have also been made to Japan and back. On European missions, the C-141B has a 26 to 31 percent average payload improvement over the A model. In the Pacific, the average payload improvement is approximately 34 percent. As airlift requirements become more and more demanding, the C-141Bs, with their increased volume capabilities, are answering the almost daily calls for routine as well as special cargo airlift missions. The extra 23.3 feet in the stretch Starlifter increases the available pallet positions from 10 to 13, a gain of 30%, or a weight-carrying advantage averaging about 14,000 pounds per flight. Most importantly, where the A's averaged only 58% utilization of their maximum payload weight capacity, the B models utilize 85%. Since overall military cargo is usually of low density, the C-141Bs with the added volume are substantially more efficient in airlift potential. Besides meeting the demands for palletized cargo transport, the C-141B Starlifter offers added capability for the movement of U.S. Army and Marine equipment and supplies. With the stretched C-141B on the job, the Air Force is now assured of improved combat deployment capabilities and mission flexibility, and is much less dependent on in-route bases. The movement of increased numbers of troops and or paratroops also results from the added capabilities of the B model as those already in service quickly prove their worth and readiness to do the job better, faster, and cheaper than the old A's. Thus, on every count, U.S. airlift response, such as that previously required in Israel, Zaire, and other rapid deployment crises, is now greatly enhanced. 
Already a veteran of many humanitarian missions, the Starlifter, with its new length and in-flight refueling capability, can be expected to do much more in the future. The new B model, like the A, is proving to be a relatively maintenance-free airplane. And like the A's, its quick turnaround capability means it can move out on time for any type of mission. When the C-141 stretch program is completed, it will have added airlift capacity equivalent to 90 additional C-141As. Meanwhile, as each new B model takes to the air, it underscores the essence of the entire C-141 modification program, a very cost-effective method of getting planes quickly Planes that will carry more and fly further to bolster U.S. airlift capability well into the next century.